Okay, we gotta find the slope of a line through each pair of points, but now I only have the coordinates. Okay. Now, one thing we could do, we could graph a line, we could graph the coordinates, plot the points and, and figure it out. Let me just come and say I had a point here, I had another point here. My point, one of them, I'm gonna call this x1, y1. Basically, I mean the x of the first point, the y of the first point. This other point, let me call this x2, y2. Okay, now for my slope, I know I have to go, in this case, I will have to go up and then I have to go right. Now, this point right here, I can, I'm just going to say is x1, y2. Okay, x1, because notice is on the on the same level on the x-axis as the first point. So it's x1. Now the height of it, notice is as high as the second point. So y2. Now, interesting is that my first difference, I'm looking at the height. I can figure that by going y2 minus y1. Okay, so that's how I can figure that height. Now, how much I have to go here sideways, I'm gonna find this as x2 minus x1. You guys know this is the difference between the axes. So I'm gonna say my formula, a formula that I'm going to use it's going to be, for my slope, it's going to be y2, y2 minus y1. And what I mean with that is the y of the second point minus the y of the first point over x2 minus x1. Because remember, it's rise over run. All right, so let's take a look. I'm going to go here for number 13. I'm going to go negative 2 minus a negative six, All right? I went the second y minus the first y. Now, if it helps you, if it helps you label your, your numbers here, x1, y1, basically means the x of the first point, the y of the first point, and then label this as x2, y2. Right, the x of the second point, the y of the second point. Now, if that helps you, Remember, I'm going y2 minus y1, so negative 2 minus a negative 6. Now at the bottom, I'm going to go negative 4 minus a negative 3, right? The second x minus the first x. Now, one thing, too, I want to do. When there's two negative signs put together, I'm going to make them into a plus sign. So on the top, these two negative signs put together, I make it into a plus sign. At the bottom, the same thing. These two negative signs, I make it into a plus sign. So on the top, I have negative 2 plus 6. Now imagine I had a soccer game or a football game or any sport, and I have the negatives playing the positives. The negative scored 2 points and the positive scored 6. My question is, who won by how much? So the negative scored 2, the positive scored 6. I'm going to say the positives won by 4. And that's really what negative 2 plus 6 is. It's positive 4. Now looking at the bottom, negative 4 plus 3, right? The negative score 4, the positive score 3. So I'm going to say the negatives 1 by 1. So negative 1. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Okay. couple of things I'm going to do. First thing is there's a negative sign. So I'm going to bring it to the front. So let me write this as negative 4 over 1. When there's a negative sign, bring it to the front. Another thing I'm going to do is when there's a fraction and there's a 1 at the bottom, it stops being a fraction. So my answer is just going to be negative 4. So again, bring the negative to the front. And then because there's a 1 at the bottom, it stops being a fraction. All right, let's take a look at number 14. Let me erase this stuff. I did this just so we could come up with a formula. The formula we came up with was y2 minus y1 
over x2 minus x1. If it helps you label your sides, so this your points, this is x1, y1. Again, x of the first point, y of the first point, x2, y2. Right, x of the second point, y of the second point. Let me zoom out so we can see the formula. Let me highlight our formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in my case here, let me go 2 minus 3 over negative 19 minus a negative 9. Let me zoom in here. First thing I do here is um to see if there's two negative signs put together because I'm going to make them into a plus sign. So there. At the bottom, there were two negative signs together. Now, on the top, 2 minus 3. The positive score 2, the negative score 3. So negative 1. At the bottom, negative 19, positive 9. So the negative score 19, the positive score 9. I'm going to say the negative 1 by 10. All right, two negative signs canceled out. Two negative signs become a positive sign. So that I get positive 1 over 10. I cannot simplify. If the 1 was at the bottom, it stops being a fraction. But the 1 is on the top. So it does remain a fraction. My slope is 1 over 10. Let's take a look at number 15. Let me label this as x1, y1, x2, y2. And I'm going to go negative 11 minus 3, right, y2 minus y1 over negative 16 minus 16, x2 minus x1. First thing I see is, do I see two negative signs put together? Uh, I don't. All right, so on the top, negative 11 and a negative 3, that's a negative 14. At the bottom, negative 16 and another negative 16 gives me negative 32. The cool thing is that two, there's two negative signs, so it becomes positive. Let me simplify my fractions. Let me divide each by 2. So I have 7 over 16. Cannot simplify more, so that's it. Lastly, let's take a look at number 16. Label this as x1, y1, right? x of the first point, y of the first point, x2, y2, x of the second point, y of the second point. Based on our formula, right? You guys saw the formula we came up with. I'm going to go 14 minus 14, right? The second y minus the first y over negative 2 minus 8. So first, any two negative signs put together to make it a plus? No. All right, so looking on the top, 14 minus 14 is 0. At the bottom, negative 2 and a negative 8, that makes negative 10. Now, because the zeros on the top, we saw this yesterday, right? The zeros on the top, my slope happens to be 0. Remember, this was one of the cases that we saw yesterday. Okay, so that's what we did. Don't forget the formula.